Hello and a warm welcome to a brand new season for 2010 World Superbikes from Melbourne, the capital of Victoria, a vibrant multicultural society with approximately 4 million people. This is Australia's second largest city and is steeped in a history of world famous sporting events from the Melbourne Cup to the Australian Open and of course until 2014 now, World Superbikes. We start the first round of the World Superbike Championship here at Phillip Island, about an hour and a half south of Melbourne. The famous wildlife sanctuary, which once a year opens up to the wildlife of roaring bikes. And once again, a good crowd here in Australia. They do love their motorcycle racing. We are just on the tip of the Bass Straits, looking out to Tasmania and the South Pole. It's windy and the weather can change within a moment. But Australians have been dominant over the 20 years of racing here. And once again, all eyes will be on the likes of Chris Vermeulen and Troy Corsa to see whether they can fly high as we get a demonstration by the Australian Air Force. And Another man backed by some flying objects. Alitalia, in this case, is Max Biaggi, the four-time 250 world champion, looking to finally add a fifth star to that hat that you see there. Four stars on it. He wants a fifth, and he wants to be the first man to win a world title in MotoGP and in World Superbikes. Well, Max Biaggi's got 250 titles. And he's won races here in World Superbikes. He's just not won the title just yet. But this year, after winning on the all-new Aprilia last year, they do feel that the wave is with them. We're watching a demonstration, everybody looking up at the skies, and that's something they've been doing all week long because the weather here at Phillip Island has varied somewhat. English fans, it's a bit like English weather at the moment. It's chilly, 20 degrees, and on Friday, when we started proceedings, we had a track temperature of 51 degrees. And it was hotting up. And there's your runner-up from last year and the perennial runner-up, Noriyuki Haga. Never won the world title. And again, always seems to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. In the warm-up this morning, he was taken out unceremoniously on the first corner, one of the fastest corners here at Phillip Island by Ruben Zass, who's had a torrid weekend. And we hear the latest is anyway, from Toshi, the man just preparing his helmet and gloves. And here is that moment. Zaus, turn one. This is the warm-up, a time when you're supposed to be just literally that, warming things up. Well, fra frankly, Zaus warmed it or overcooked it, so to speak, and took both of them out. I'm glad to say both of them are OK, we hear. Though we do think that Zaus may not even be taking part in the race this afternoon. So a big off for Haga and Zaus, and yes, still in disbelief. But we hear from Toshi, his mentor, that it is a slight bruise to the wrist or arm, right arm of Haga, and he will race, he is okay. Talking of racing, the man alongside me currently holds a lap record here at Phillip Island. He's a former Superbike Australian champion and the current World Endurance champion. He, of course, Steve Martin, I'm delighted that you're here at Phillip Island with me, and once again, a great crowd in anticipation of what could be the biggest season ever in the history of World Superbikes. Yes, it's going to be absolutely fantastic racing today, especially with the weather cooling down. It's going to make the racing a lot closer, and uh, we're going to see some guys from the third row of the grid, uh, like the Aprilias, who haven't qualified well back on the third row. They were first and second fastest, but this man... Michel Fabrizio has it all to play for. We haven't talked about him too much this weekend, but as usual, he's been doing his quiet thing that he was doing at the end of last year, and he's put that factory Ducati in second position on the grid. So I think he's going to be one of the guys on the podium at the end of today. You make an interesting comment about how much we've talked about him this weekend. I think that's true of, of every season that he's been around in World Superbikes. He's always there or thereabouts, but he's never been the big contender. Even the Italian press, I'm told, are not saying that this is his big year. Their attention, once again, is always on Max Biaggi. 
So in some ways, Fabrizio has a little bit of advantage because the Italian press can be pretty tough sometimes by uh, avoiding that, but he could well be the contender this year. Here's Troy Corsa, Sam Corsa alongside him. And these two are stalwarts, of course, of this particular event. And the record that Corsa has here is second to none. Seven times a winner here and multiple pole positions. He comes here, though, with the relatively all-new BMW and no pole position this time. He's qualified a long way down, but you never know with Troy Corsa. No, certainly not. I mean, uh, been struggling a little bit with the BMW. On race pace in these cooler conditions, uh, we could expect to see him be up there in that leading group uh, because his race pace is quite good, but he just couldn't get that fast lap in that we're used to seeing him get. So a bit of work to do for him, but uh, to be honest, the team's had a bit of a torrid time this year in Australia with Rubens Aus crashing four times and not taking part in the race. And that's five times if you uh, count uh, uh, the test which was last week. The Alfa Romeo Mito will also be in existence. Next, it's Cal Crutchlow moving as World Supersport champion to World Superbikes to partner James Tozen in the all-conquering World Championship winning team. Yamaha won everything, including World Supersport with this man, Cal Crutchlow. Very impressive to be on the front row in his first World Superbike race for Yamaha. Uh, 31.6, not as fast as Ben Spees went last year, but let's remember this guy's got a lot less experience than Ben Spees. Great to have this man back into the fold. Chris Vermeulen, after a couple of hard years, four in fact in MotoGP, with just one win, he's back in World Superbikes, where he say came so close to winning the title back in 2004. And he's got another chance to do it here in the next couple of years. He's got a two-year deal with his Kawasaki team and a brand new bike coming out in 2011. Qualified on the fourth row, not really where he wanted to be, but uh, a lot faster than Kawasaki have been in a long time. We have to remember that this field is so, so close. Even the fourth row is virtually only about a second off the front row pace. So, and Steve, uh, I said it at the top, this, this is one of the, possibly one of the most competitive seasons we've ever had. There are so many former winners and so many potential world champions amongst this group. I think honestly, even if uh, Hager or Corsa or Haslam get a double here today, that is not going to set the scene for the rest of the championship. I think it's going to come down to who can get the most out of their tyres in the second half of the race. And that's definitely going to be the case here today with these guys, because they're all pretty good in the first half of the race. But uh, in these cooler conditions, they're going to be probably risking a tyre on the rear of their bikes that can go good for half the race and then drop off in the last half of the race. Yeah, as I said, uh, it's going to be very interesting what the, the weather does here and the sun is shining, but it hasn't been that way all weekend long. We started with very hot temperatures on Friday afternoon with several crashes and, of course, the highlights of Super Pole saw several riders getting some excellent times, especially this number 91, the all-new look Suzuki with Leon Haslam. And Carlos Checa has been quick all weekend long in hot and inclement conditions, or colder conditions, I should say. His teammate on the Alta Ducati is Shane Byrne, former British champion and two-time winner here in World Superbikes. Fabrizio quick again and flying the flag as Haga struggled somewhat. And also, as always, the great qualifier, Jakob Schmerz, who sadly had a blown engine in the warm-up this morning, but he was quick again in Super Pole. And Hager didn't get the best of qualifying. He's on the third row. And if you remember, this time last year, he won from the third row. Tom Sykes goes from Yamaha to Kawasaki. He joins Chris Vermeulen. He too could be a factor this year and he'll want to go well, having had a tough year last year. Max Biaggi didn't shine actually on the Aprilia, nor did Camia. Having said that in the warm up, those were the two fastest bikes out there. And Ruben Zass, well, not a lot to be said in positive for Ruben this weekend. He's been off, and so too has Leon Camier. A little off there at Honda Corner, but OK. But all eyes were on the other Englishman, number 91, Anne Haslam and his fiancée Ollie crossing their fingers as Leon Haslam was quite superb, frankly, throughout the qualifying sessions. And in the end, not even two-time world champion James Tozen joining Yamaha for the first time and attempting to become the first rider to win on three different marks. Gal Crutchlow put in some decent laps towards the end. They've had chatter problems 
But in the end, it was all Leon Hasem taking his first ever pole position. to Phillip Island. Phillip Island, Australia, we welcome you to here in Melbourne, Victoria. The place to be is the motto, and you'd have to say on a beautiful afternoon here with the waves crashing in from the Bass Straits onto Phillip Island, we are at round one of 13 of 2010. A new decade, a new era for world superbikes. The champion Ben Spees has moved on, and now it's anybody's game. There are possibly 13 potential world champions and i do mean 13 we've already got 13 race winners in the past and here's the calendar starting in australia we head to portugal next and we are once again four continents with trips to kyle army south africa salt lake city in the usa we head back to silverstone the famous home of british motorsport in great britain for August, and we end in the traditional Champagne Loire Valley Magni Corps in France. That's in October. That seems a long, long way away from what we have in front of us here at Phillip Island. We are down under, but who is going to get on top of the situation? And I do believe, Steve Martin alongside me, that Phillip Island could prove crucial in terms of the psychological edge when we know it's going to be open and we know there's going to be so many different winners and different podium places this year yeah definitely i mean really have no idea as we have a look at the circuit uh, there is phillip island this circuit is very temperature sensitive um, and you can see there 4.4 uh, kilometers long troy course is still with a lap record 2007 now the reason that that lap record hasn't been broken is because the surface is getting a little bit bumpier throughout time and uh, depend very temperature dependent in the first race this morning we could see the guys dip down into the 31s it looks like they'll be running the softer race tire and you can see the track temperature there 18 degree 25 degrees track and 18 degrees variant that is perfect conditions to get in the lap record times and let's just explain further the track itself is challenging but as you mentioned the temperature makes a big difference here we started on friday with very hot conditions 51 degrees track temperature that is extremely hot and uh, what eight riders going down in slippy conditions yeah it is and the other thing that it affects a lot is the tire choice because pirelli have bought here a 200 rear tire and they've bought a 190 rear tire the 190 rear tire gives you quicker times but it doesn't last as long this is what the, t the guys are probably going to put on now, hoping that the cool conditions will make that tyre last longer because they'll gain half a second per lap uh, in the first part of the race. And just so me and my mum understand, 190 is a slightly smaller tyre than a 200. Yeah, it's the width. They're talking about the width. In layman's terms, a 200 is a wide rear tyre, a 190 is a narrow rear tyre. Better handling and better grip, uh, but for a shorter term. There's your pole man, Leon Haslam, and what a combination. Giacomo Guidotti, who has taken many riders to world championships, including Troy Corsa. He knows what he's doing, and I think this combination of this youngster, a hungry youngster with a huge pedigree, of course. If you don't know, he is the son of Ron Haslam, one of the greats from Great Britain in 500 days, back in the 70s and 80s. But now, little Leon, the pocket rocket, as he's known, is come of age. He's been around for a long time, but he's still young, but this is his first factory, and he's turned it into his first pole position. Bodes well, doesn't it? Three laps for him in Super Pole, all of them 31.5. Now, just in case you were wondering, that's not the new 1198. <laughs> that's just the starter motor. No, that, yeah, that, there's Fabrizio. He's just um, taking a bit of time out, just chilling. We haven't spoken a lot about him, but he's kept his nose clean throughout practice. He was a faller, had a fall on Friday, but uh, not as serious as the one his teammate Noriki Haga had this morning. There is the 1198. How much has it changed? Not much. Not a lot. There's not a lot that can do, Ducati can do to that uh, bike. It's pretty much on the limit. They've uh, upped the suspension a little bit. It's already got the same electronics package as the MotoGP bike of Casey Stoner, so not a lot left that they can do except hope to bring out a new model. Yes, well, the old model, that is Troy Bayliss, will be testing it. He was here this weekend. He is here this weekend, so I guess that's an advantage. There you go. Choice of champions, and uh, he's got his... What is he, what is he eating there, Cal Crutchlow? 
it would definitely be some sort of sports supplement just to give him a, a last sugary buzz as he gets off the line. Great job by Cal to get that bike on the front row in his first superbike race for Yamaha. We're used to seeing him on the front row and if not in pole position in super sport, but to come into this field at Phillip Island and do that in, in virtually what is only his second race meeting at Phillip Island ever, uh, fantastic job by him. We're going to have to wait and see how he goes with his race pace because the Yamahas have had some small troubles with chatter throughout practice. Well, but, just uh, explain that while we've got a moment. Uh, yes, they, um, you say small problems. They had a, a huge problem last week in testing where they've even gone to bring out the old subframe from last year because the lighter new parts weren't working. They were giving a lot of chatter. Yeah, they took three kilograms off the bike and that changed the frequency. The motorcycle was a li little bit by a, like a musical instrument. It needs to be in tune so that it doesn't chatter. Well, they changed the tune of the frame and everything and uh, it chattered. And of course, don't forget, possibility, and as we said, all seasons in one day here, possibility of a flag to flag here the bike's ready for that that means that uh, well you can explain it well what that means is that you see the bikes there uh, the, there will be no uh, stoppage in this race if it rains the guys come in uh, the race continues and they're allowed to swap bikes and all those bikes in the pit lane there will be fitted with wet weather tires ready to make the swap over here's a man we will be talking about a lot this season i'm sure carlos checker he's been sensational in qualifying altira and Ducati, a good combination, and this is not a bike that's far off the actual factory Ducatis. And so far, Checker and Byrne have been quick in testing and here at the island. Yeah, Carlos Checker, 37 years old, doesn't have a lot of time left if he's going to make a massive impact in this um, championship, but this could be his year. He's gelled with the Ducati well, and this isn't a standard Ducati like Jakob Schmertz or the other guys have got. This is as close as you get. This machine's got the fly-by-wire throttle system like the factory bikes and uh, that makes the bike a lot easier and the power a lot softer to use so that definitely will help him uh, in his bid to uh, at least get in the top three of the championship if not uh, challenge for the win you say he hasn't got a lot of time left you've only just started winning world titles yes but it <laughs> just for fun <laughs> and lap records tell us about uh, your uh, experience a couple of months here or a month ago here no i just did a little bit of old uh, classic racing down here at phillip island that's fun but uh, this is where the serious boys are and, uh, and the real fast boys. But it's an interesting point, though. This circuit is a very specialised circuit. And you know, I remember all the years around here, you were always on the front row uh, against the likes of James Tozen. It's, it's a specialist circuit. James is one of those specialists. But, you know, it is one of those places, isn't it? You just need to have, uh, you know, track knowledge. And I mean, these guys have all done a lot of laps around here now. Uh, a lot of the teams come out testing, uh, winter testing. You can just see James's wrist strap there because he had a massive high side out of turn 11 uh, yesterday morning. And uh, he's got a lot of uh, steroid uh, injections in the uh, wrist to numb the wrist. So he hasn't got a lot of feeling and he's going to be lacking strength. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see how he goes in the race distance. There's the man of the moment. Chris Vermeulen of Australia vaunted onto the scene once he left Australia onto the British scene and was a protege, of course, of Barry Sheen and therefore, out of respect, always has the 7 and this time 77 on the Kawasaki. But Chris Vermeulen, never a world superbike champion, but not far off. Certainly a many, many time winner and podium maker but uh, delighted to have effectively a rejuvenation uh, after has what has been a tough time in MotoGP for him. Delighted to be back. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, he's down there in 14th position, but he's less than a second, less than 0 0.8 off the front row. So that just goes to show you how tight those front four rows are. There's no slow guys out there. More than half the guys on the grid have won races. I mean, that just goes to show, show you how tough this class is nowadays. Yeah, I think, um, you know, last year we saw a great battle uh, in one of the greatest years we've had with Haga and Speeds, but it really was just those two. Ray won a race, the man we're looking at right now, but really everybody else was just making up the numbers. This year it'll be different, and I'm interested to see what this man from Ireland, Jonathan Ray, can do. And he knows that this is a big weekend because if you can get some points on the board early on, uh, it'll make a big difference. You know he's confident at Portugal. He's not that confident here, as you've found out this weekend. Yeah, I mean, he's just struggling to get the bike turning uh, the way that he would like around the Phillip Island circuit. And he's uh, basically, he knows it's a long season like all of these guys. So he just wants to get through here, through this weekend uh, in one piece and get the best results he can. It's probably going to be unlikely that he can win here, but never say never. In memory of Grandad Corsa. And sadly, on the 14th of February, 
Ron Corsa, or Pops as he was known, stood for many years on the first corner here at Phillip Island, passed away, but he was 84 at the time, so he'd had a good run, as the Corsas would say, and certainly Troy is racing in his memory because, of course, Ron was the man who bought him his first ever 250 bike, so special day for Troy Corsa. And let's pause for a moment for the national anthem. Maria Tuvi of Phillip Island, a music teacher from Phillip Island, singing it away. Beautiful rendition of the national anthem and Australian sports fans are some of the most fervent in the world and they love all forms of sport, whether it's tennis, football, Aussie rules, football or the Olympics where they've been doing pretty good there too. But motorcycle racing and motorsport is king, certainly today here at the island as it always has been. And this is definitely, he may not be an Aussie, but he's certainly one of the favorites amongst the crowd. He is of course Massimiliano Biaggi. The Roman Emperor. Now will he finally reign? He had a rotten time here a couple of years ago uh, when we thought actually his chances of becoming world champion were strong, but he got taken out and hurt his wrist on the first corner, and it pretty much put pay to his whole season, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was strong that whole season, but uh, had a lot of bad luck. Um, starting in the 11th position here, if you remember, it was actually the fact that uh, he had a failure in super pole with his bike. He started on the fourth row of the grid, which caused that all to happen because he was running pace similar to Bayless. So he certainly is fast around here, and he proved that in the morning warm-up fastest in the morning warm-up this morning so expect to see him up the front because the conditions now are similar to they were in the morning warm-up just about everybody on the grid going with the softer rear tire that uh, will give some really good lap times and then it's going to be who will be able to manage the life of the rear tire from halfway through the race and good to see the in front team doing their bit julian thomas and marco we wish them well both croc as they say here in australia but uh, sadly not able to be at the event and we wish them a speedy recovery from all of us and in front and involved in the world superbike family and it is a family it is indeed that and we've all come down to australia and we all want to see if this man leon haslam can finally do it his fiance getting married next year in fact in the background there ollie and she is nervous i had a speak i had a chat with her this morning and her and Leon's mum, Anne, who you think wouldn't be nervous having seen and been through Ron's whole career, but she's even more nervous now. It's a little boy. Yeah, I mean, he's got it all to play for now. He's had a great... Uh, I mean, you'd have to say he's the favourite for the race. I mean, he's qualified well. Uh, when it's hot, he's fast, and when it's cold, he's fast. So all he has to do now is put all the pieces together, and he should get his first World Superbike win. But as we know, it doesn't always work that way. Sylvain Guintoli, the Frenchman. We haven't mentioned him yet. He, of course, teammate too. Leon Haslam, and this is his first year in World Superbikes, rode in MotoGP and of course the British Championship, but unfortunately broke his leg early on last year and wasn't able to show his true potential. He was actually buying Leon Haslam beers last night because he got towed around by Leon Haslam to put that bike on fifth position, got his best lap behind Leon Haslam, so I'm sure that he was quite thankful for that. Mate, I don't know if he was. In the modern age of these guys, do they buy each other beers or is it a coffee or a latte? Well, maybe a latte on Saturday night. Camia, another man that was fast in the morning warm-up, second fastest, and I had a look at his run. Uh, he did that time on a tyre with about 10 laps on it, so uh, that could lead to some good results today also. Yeah, the and sponsored Leon Camia, the British champion. Really looking forward to see what he can do on the Aprilia. I wouldn't have thought when I first arrived that uh, the Aprilia seemingly designed for... Biaggi. Here's the grid. Haslam, Fabrizio, Crutchlow and Checker. But Camia has been quick on that Aprilia. Wintoli, Schmerz, Johnny Ray and, John, uh, and James Tozen make out the second row. Third row, Lanzi, Harger, Biaggi and Sykes. Sykes moving to Kawasaki after being with Yamaha last year. Troy Corsa, Chris Vermeulen, the two Aussies next to each other. There's Leon Camia on the fourth row. Shane Byrne on the fifth row. Andrew Pitt 
Returning World Super Sport Champion is back in World Superbikes. He is on a privateer BMW. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Ruben Zaus not taking part in the race. He's had four big crashes and big offs in the last few days. And I think perhaps best to rest it up. Let's take a look at this Phillip Island circuit with an absolute expert. We are honoured to have Steve Martin here. He knows it backwards. You started racing here almost, didn't you? Pretty much, um, yes. There's a lot of overtaking opportunities here and the, the whole name of the game is to get away into the, with the leading group. If you lose the leading group here, you're going to get yourself into all sorts of trouble. So with these tyres, only going to be able to last about half race distance before they start to spin up. The name of the game will be to stay in the front group and use the least amount of rear tyre as possible so that later on in the race, you're going to be able to go for the, the win and push when you need to. How much variance is there in the Pirellis that they've got? Well, pretty much everyone's gone for the soft, softer, riskier tyre. The, uh, the 200, which is going to give better pace at the end of the race, uh, is a little bit slower at the start. And uh, as we know it, this place here, slipstreaming, is part of the, the duel and the game. So you need to be in this front group that we're going to see to uh, make the advantage of it at the end of the race. It's interesting you say that because after the warm-up, we spoke to Leon Haslam and he said he thought that the smaller tyre, not the 200, would be the one he would go for. Yeah, well, and that's what everyone has gone for. They've pretty much all gone for the 190 rear tyre, which gotcha. is the, the less wide. And what that does is it makes the bike more manoeuvrable. Um, the compound that that's in is a little bit more grip, but the life isn't quite as long as the bigger, wider 200 tyre, which gives you more contact patch, a bit like a car with a wide tyre on. It's got more grip than a car with a narrow tyre. We welcome viewers around the world from Sky Sports in New Zealand, Fox Sports here in Australia, all the way around the world, Mnet in South Africa, wherever you're watching from Speed in the USA. You join us at Phillip Island for a start of a brand new season of World Superbike Racing. Jonathan Green and Steve Martin bringing you the action here. A packed crowd as always here at Phillip Island. We're about to go racing again in a brand new decade. Who's gonna win the championship? Well, you tell us. Keep an eye on Leon Haslam off the line. The Suzuki, normally a rocket, but so is the Ducati of Fabrizio too. Wouldn't be surprised to see him into turn one first. Leon Haslam on his first pole position with a brand new bike and a brand new team. Can he get his first ever World Superbike victory? Away they go! 2010 kicks off. Haslam gets away well. So too does Carlos Checker though. Hager's up there too, look at Hager. Hager, you can't hold him back and he slots into third place. Haslam. Just about, Fabrizio Haslam. takes second and Haslam's just hanging on to the lead. Yeah, Haslam, good ride by him, went right round the outside. The Ducati's got into the corner first, but he managed to uh, get round. You can see there, there's Vermeulen up there too. Chris Vermeulen gets a good start. There's Cal Crux 35, Checkers number seven. There's Corsa, Corsa's got away well too. He's in the top eight. Yeah, good, good start by Corsa. Haslam, Fabrizio, Hager and Ray. Good start from Jonathan Ray, but Hager sensational from the third row. Course is in seven. Biaggi way back at the moment in eighth position. Vermeulen up to ninth, Tosin is tenth and still hanging on to that left wrist, which is giving him a lot of jip, and he's got injections in it for the pain. Jonathan Ray got a good start up into fourth position at the moment too. That's exactly where he needs to be. Up towards the famous hay shed for the first time. Haslam went off there in practice yesterday, but he's okay this time, but he's got two ominous dukes behind him as he heads up Lukey Heights named after the man who helped develop this circuit back in the 60s. I think if Hasler can just get a bit of a, a break on these guys and just get his head down um, he might be able to um, stay in front and set the pace. He's not going to want to make it too fast but he's not going to want to have 20 guys on his tail. He wants to get that group down to about four guys. It's about four at the moment. The long long run to the last corner here. Swan corner. There's Tom Sykes in the middle of the field. First lap completed, Haslam. This is ideal for these guys as well because the last thing you want is an Aprilia in this top group if you're one of these guys because the Aprilia, the absolute fastest machine out there at the moment, 320 k's an hour the other day. Hager passes his teammate Fabrizio and you can't hold a good man down, can you? Knocked off by Zaus in the warm up and almost 300 k's an hour. Got a slight uh, damage to his wrist and his uh, right arm, but he's in second place and chasing hard now on Leon Haslam, who's pulling away at the front just slightly with 21 to go. Yeah, Suzuki looking very smooth at the moment too. You can just see Johnny Ray using a lot more road in the background there. Honda corner, he's on a Honda. 
Cal Crutchlow there too. He's doing a good job. This is let's remember this is his first time racing with these guys. Johnny Ray got a bit of a taste at Portimao the year before in 2008, but uh, this is uh, Cal Crutchlow making his debut in fifth position. Good job by him at the moment. Out of Siberia again, away and look, ooh, the Kawasaki. And the Sylvan Guntoli Suzuki almost coming together, but it's the other Suzuki of Leon Haslam stretching that lead just slightly. Harga will go in pursuit over Luki Heights and down towards MG. Suzuki looking good here. It's uh, not moving around a lot, that's for sure. So very good to see. And Steve, after all the crashes we've had on the lead up to this, a very clean start. Yeah, it is a very clean start, but there's a lot of hurt boys out there, that's for sure. Especially Shaky Byrne, guys like Shaky Byrne, James Toes. Crashed again in the warm up, did Shane? Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of sore bodies out there, and they'll be looking forward to tonight and a month off. Across the line comes Leon Hazen. The gap is now. He does a 132-1, fastest lap, but he's got half a second now on Harger in second place. He did a 132.5. Just to fill you in on top speeds, Leon Haslam's bike, 297 k's an hour down the chute. Compare that to Max Biaggi, and this is quick, 316 by Max Biaggi. And we've seen uh, Max Biaggi already click 320 in practice. Yeah, absolutely unbelievable, that Aprilia. And there are the two Aprilias in the back of your screen. No real surprises then at the start of this race. Biaggi in the top 10, Camier just behind him. Schmerz didn't start well, he's down in 12. But here comes Jonathan Ray and Cal Crutchlow. The two Brits are on it. Yep, Johnny Ray in fourth position now. Crutchlow just falling back a little bit. Keep an eye on Carlos Checker too, 132.6, and I've got a feeling that Checker's just biding his time. They can't let Haslam get away though, and he is getting away just slightly. The strength of the Ducati is not in this first part of the race. The strength of the Ducati is from halfway forward because the Ducati, it's got a nice soft frame that's forgiving and um, the engine power is so smooth and easy going that uh, that is what looks after the tyres. So Harger and Fabrizio... Oh, oh no! One goes down! That, is that Guintoli? It looks like... Uh, no, it's not! It's James Tozen yeah, with that left rear. Yeah. And you know what? Coming up, Lukey Heights, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, he Not moving the that. double world champion. Let's hope he's OK, yeah. but he's down hard. Uh, and that could actually bring out a red flag. Shaky burns on the gravel too at some point there. So the race continues. Has them at the front, the new boy. But the old fella, two-time world champion, James Tozen, is down. And a man who's won here before not enjoying his experience at Phillip Island this weekend so far. Haslam pulling away, I said slightly, ha! He's pulling away by a long way well, in racing terms. Well, he's th there is uh, Tozlin, he's, he's up, up and he's, he's okay. okay. But he's holding his left wrist yeah. as we expected. Yeah, we knew that that Here's was what happened. Have a look. A big high side there. Couldn't hold it. That's, that's, no, it wasn't that. He just high sided. That was a high side. Got in there, back came around, flicked him back over the bars. And at that point right there, over 200 kilometers an hour, that is big. So then, Tozen is out. His teammate Crutchlow continues to circulate in fourth position. Meantime, Vermeulen's worked Somebody his way. Somebody else is off at Honda. Yeah, Vermeulen's worked like his way. Looked like a Kawasaki. Let's have a look, because Vermeulen had worked his way up to seventh. We don't know who that is yet, but... Uh, it is a Kawasaki. Oh, no. And it is Vermeulen. Yeah. Sadly, Fair. Chris Vermeulen's comeback ends at Honda on a Kawasaki. Fair play to him, though, to get the, you know, to get the bike up to seventh. Looks like he... Um, Lost the front into there or something. Um, but in the meantime, Leon Haslam's still out front. He knows that he has to conserve the tyres, and he knows that this race is only going to get harder. They're only, they've only done three laps so far. Yeah, long way to go yet. And in fact, the lead that Haslam was pulling away has now just gone uh, slightly shorter because, as you can see, Fabrizio's got ahead of Harger. He did a 32-6 and was on the same pace as the leader Haslam. And it looks as though Ray's caught up too. Let's have a look at the times this time. Fabrizio goes 32.5, two tenths quicker this time. Uh, Hart has gone with him and Ray's right up there on the pace too. 32.6, so Ray's right there too. The Crutchlow's behind them, then Checker and Biaggi. The other thing that isn't going to help tyre wear at the moment is the sun has just started to come out. And the track only needs to heat up a little bit and we're going to see these bikes slide around quite a bit. Well, that's what we want, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> so then... Corsa still going well in eighth position. Just behind Biaggi is Corsa, and in fact, he's gone past Camier, so that's a good move by Troy Corsa there. Schmerz is currently in 11th place. Lanzi 12th, Sykes, Neukirchner, and Pip in the points. Andrew Pip returning to the fold in an all-privateer 
BMW. Uh, yeah. What about the chances for that? The right bag and BMW team. Got running a standard motor here this weekend, so uh, that is why we're not seeing him further up the field at the moment. Uh, doing a good job. They'll have more parts for next time out in Portimao, but uh, just has to keep it in one piece and keep it together for this weekend. See, Steve, I've seen you leading the race just like Leon Haslam here. Can you control it from the front? Well, you can at the moment. I mean, let's have a look. Oh, oh, there's Chris. Yeah, he just lost the front going in there. Uh, pushed too hard. Um, he was one guy that. Oh, and look at that. Oh, it's jammed on full throttle. That's what's happened there. <laughs> That's not going to help. Blown the engine. No, he's going to have to change. They'll be. They'll get that back as soon as possible. Put a new engine in for race two. But uh, yeah, that's what happens when you don't have a, uh, a, a, a lean. They used to be, there used to be a rule where if the bike fell over, it had a cutoff switch. They don't have that rule anymore. And uh, there you go, one engine, bang. Harder going bang, 132.4, very quick indeed. And he was the quickest man that time out, but they're all within a tenth of each other. And as you can see, the gap has not changed dramatically. Ray hanging in there in fourth place, but now he's got the attention of Crutchlow and Checker. Yeah, I mean, Haslam's doing the right thing at the moment. He's probably riding at about 99%, and he's got a little... Oh, there goes Crutchlow Both into Honda. the Yamahas are out. It's not been an easy test, it's not been an easy run-up, and now both riders are out of the proceedings of race one. Well, ironically, this happened to Ben Spees. He was knocked out of race one last year on this bike and came back and won. So let's hope that uh, Tozen and Crutchlow will be back. What happened this time? Identical problem just a little bit later in the corner. Tips in, bang, loses the front. Uh, most of these guys running a softer front tyre than what they have been all through practice because of the conditions. Uh, but now with the sun out on the circuit, perhaps uh, that soft tyre just not working as well as it can, especially on a Yamaha, which is a little bit front heavy. The factory Ducati is almost identical to where they were last year. Slight change to the exhaust system. They've got a new sponsor in Tim, the mobile phone. But that's about it. And once again, Fabrizio and Haga are right where they need to be. Out goes the board for Haslam. Give him the indication of exactly where he is. And all he knows is he can't make a mistake because two of the greatest riders in the world and one of the greatest bikes is right behind him. If he wants that first victory, he's going to have to work for it. Fabrizio, fastest last time, 132.3. Yeah, what you've got, you've got that front group of three guys in the mid-32s from 32.3 to 32.5. The rest of the field, well, the next eight guys at least, lapping in 32 high. So those three guys are starting to pull away from the group behind them, from Johnny Ray, Checker and Biaggi. Yeah, Checker, almost two seconds to Johnny Ray there. Yeah, but look at Checker now. He's really pulled up the gap and closed down on Johnny Ray. Later on in the race, uh, he's definitely going to make an attack at Johnny Ray. And look at Biaggi in sixth place. Some three seconds off the lead, but not far off the group he's chasing, and that's Checker and Ray. Out of Siberia. Flip-flop, left to right, up through the gears, the hay shed, the famous hay shed. Talk to the marshals on that corner, they love it being there because the, the bikes come straight towards them and they are ready right there with that big gravel trap. Over Lukey Heights where James Tozer went down. Down to MG, hard on the anchors. Corsa fell here a few years ago. Not this time though, he's up there in ninth position. Out of turn 11, spinning up the rear wheels if the traction control will let you. Yeah, the idea is here, don't spin that wheel up too much just yet, but you can just see Checker's bike starting to move around a little bit, and uh, he doesn't have quite the same traction control as the factory bike, and that is why his bike looks a little bit more ragged. Another lap completed. This the first race of the 2010 season. Victoria, the place to be, and that in Melbourne we are for round one. A fitting place, one of the most challenging circuits of all. Anything can happen with the weather, and the setup is crucial. Checker right now will be trying to find a place where he can safely make a way past. He's definitely caught him up, and look at him, he's fast on the gas, and that is another advantage of the Ducati. There is Guintoli. Yep, right behind uh, Leon Camier in the second Aprilia. Guintoli's last lap, a 133.0. In fact, Schmertz behind him, 32.7. So Schmertz, one of the fastest men on the track right now, and that's the battle you're watching. Schmertz in the background there with the red helmet on the white bike, number 96. Yeah, it's good to see him up in that leading group too because he has got a name of being a good little qualifier, but uh, as a racer, uh, he hasn't really put the qualifying results um, to the fore. So good to see him up in this group. Now, if anything, 
Haslam has lost that dominant lead he had because Fabrizio has carved his way through it. That's okay for the moment though, that is okay. What he needs to do, yeah, you can see that's come down the gap now, 0.3. But what he has done is he's made that leading group a group of three. So now what he needs to do is conserve himself and save himself. We're only seven laps of 22, 15 laps to go. Best thing he can do now is conserve, perhaps maybe even let Fabrizio lead the race or Haga lead the race because the Suzuki is going to use the tyres up a little bit more than those Ducatis. I don't know how you could serve anything at 300 kilometres an hour, but there you go. Well, what you, <laughs> you, it doesn't take much. You've only got to just back off just one or two tenths per lap and uh, it can really save the tyres. Well, the Ducatis are coming and coming fast as we head out of two again. Can Hard just... part of the circuit, this, because you hit the wind that's just as you come out of that corner, and now you're taking the full force of it from right to left. Yeah, it does really make a difference on this circuit what way the wind is uh, blowing. At some places it can blow you off the track, uh, in some places it blows you on, so you just have to be aware of which way, which direction the wind is blowing, as Johnny Ray has now got a freight train behind him. Yeah, and uh, he's got some real challenges too. Big stars of this sport, Carlos Checa. And Max Biaggi. In theory, it would be interesting to see where Max Biaggi makes his move. And there is the gap from uh, Checker Checker to, to Biaggi. has come down dramatically. Yeah, I said has. Biaggi was coming. His last lap at 132.8, but you can see over the last few laps just how much he's caught up. So the Aprilia now on song. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's about half a second a lap quicker than those guys in front. He needs to be a little bit closer coming out of... Uh, MG corner here through turn 11 and onto turn 12 with the top speed advantage that he's got 316 kilometers last time through he's 16 k's an hour quicker than the two guys in front so it's going to be really interesting to see if he can put that into a pass down the straight here we go then another lap completed let's take a look at the gap Haslam still leads as he has all race long 32-6 Fabrizio 0.3 behind Hager's there with him but they there are a long way there ahead goes Biaggi. Biaggi. not quite uh, see, he loses it out of turn 12 and then has to use all that speed to catch up to him. Um, check a very good into turn one. Biaggi wide on the exit of turn one. You know, Biaggi was fastest in the warm-up. He did a 132.1 and he's on that kind of pace now. 133.83 the last lap, but he's been there in the 132s. Yeah, well, now that he's caught up to those guys, he's got to try and find the way past. So uh, he won't be doing the lap times that he needs to do. And sometimes when you get caught up with guys like that, it can just break that rhythm and you get stuck with them. There's another group of three behind him as Checker goes up the inside at Honda Corner. Good move by Checker. Nice smart move there by Carlos Checker, but, but uh, pays the compliment back. Johnny Ray says, oh, wee man, I'm yeah. not having that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Johnny Ray, as aggressive as you like, and now definitely, although still young, a vetted and uh, mature rider at still a very young age, and he's not going to be intimidated by the likes of Carlos Checker. Yeah, he's certainly going to have to fight for this fourth place because he's got Checker and Biaggi right on his rear wheel at the moment. Checker looking up the inside again, but can't do it there. So there's the gap, 1.7 down and 1.6. Not much between those two. No, you've definitely got two groups, three groups of three at the moment. And here's your leader again. And how, how long before those Ducatis are going to make a challenge, you well, think? Look how smooth Haslam is. He's really doing a good job. He's uh, maintaining the pace out front uh, quicker than most guys on the circuit. I mean, the front group, they're all in 32.8. The next group, 33.6. So the group two have lost a second in that last lap on the leading group of three. So this here, if these three guys finish, in my opinion, these are going to be your podium guys. And when we spoke to Leon Haslam, he knew all the parameters this morning and he Biaggi, wasn't at all worried. Biaggi made a move. Nice move on Checker. Out of turn two. And now turn three, goes in pursuit now of Ray. So here comes the Aprilia. Yeah, Biaggi is on a, a little bit of a charge. Uh, he's got past Checker now up into fifth position and Ray's the next man in his sights. Checker up the inside of Honda, doesn't do it this time, but he stays in there with Biaggi. Yeah. Race one, World Superbikes 2010. Biaggi gets his bike a little bit loose on the exit of that corner, but to be fair, the bikes are not moving around very much at all at the moment. Out of Siberia they come, through the gearbox and flat out through here. Full gas through the hay shed. Up the hill towards Lukey Heights. Checker got good mid-corner speed there. If he just goes around, you can just see him starting to come around the outside, but no, he's not going to make a move. Always a risky move there, but if it, on the last lap you might try it. Yeah. This is where Jonathan Ray gets a good run. He gets a good run up and out of there 
uh, into turn 12 and seems to pull a little bit of ground on Biaggi and Biaggi has trouble to get past him on the straight there. Here we go then, another lap completed down the Gardner straight. So you might think that these guys are just sitting on their bikes doing nothing, but they've got all sorts of controls. And there goes Biaggi up the inside, but not this time. Not quite. Not, these guys just aren't sitting on their bikes. They've got all sorts of things they can adjust while they're riding around. They can adjust their engine braking. They can adjust their traction control settings. Um, there's all sorts of things that they can do. And that's all on the left-hand side of the handlebar uh, to give them more traction control, less tra traction control. Um, not linked back to the pits, though. It's up to the rider individually but having, to uh, change what they want. But having been to the Ron Haslam race school, I know that it's just race hard, and that's what Leon's doing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the, the best bike and best team that he's been in, so uh, and he's making the most of it out the front there. Yeah, it really is. A coming of age for Leon Haslam. We knew he's got the potential. He's come so close to winning many, many times before. Uh, let's talk Guintoli because that second group is starting to catch up to the back of Checker. That's interesting. Guintoli's made his way through that group. We haven't mentioned him, but he's moved up to seventh position in front of Smirts. And look at the gap there now. You could almost Nothing say that is a group of six. So there's your leaders going through. They've got a couple of seconds on this group, which is becoming a six-way battle for the finish with ten laps to go. What a sprint it's going to be. Out of MG and into 11 they go. This is about the time of the race where the guys that have looked after their tyres the best are going to be able to push that little bit harder. The front group still in the 32s, everybody else in the 33s at the moment. Here come that second group across the line, led by Jonathan Ray. Let's have a look at their times now. Ray does a 33.8, 33.9 from Biaggi, 33.8 from Checker. They're all on the same pace. Quintoli's even faster, 33.4. Like you say, that second group is getting ever quicker. Yep, 33-3 from Smirts and 33-2 from Camia. Wow, though they've upped the pace with 10 to go. Checker's looking for a way around the outside. He won't find one there. Tom Sykes, 12th on the Kawasaki. Neukirchner back there in 13th as well on the Honda. And Burns year. moved up. He's up into the points in 14th place ahead of Pitt, who's going to get the last point if he stays where he is. Look at this. They've joined up now. Smirts goes around the outside of Camia. Roger Hayden is in 17th position for our American fans. He's enjoying his experience, but finding this place a tough baptism of fire for sure on the Kawasaki. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to come and mix it with these boys, you need to have a bike that's up to scratch. So if you're listening, Kawasaki America, get one of those factory bikes and give it to Hayden. Good call. Checker and Guitoli. Look at the gap, how it's come down. Almost a second, well, over a second in the last few laps. Well, there it is. You can see it right there. Guintoli, the, Guintoli, the dark horse, has really closed that gap right up. Cami is right at the back of this. And now it's a six-way fight. Jonathan Ray knew he had his hands full, but now he's really going to feel it when he comes around and sees the board. Yeah, well, I mean, if he's not careful, he can end up in ninth position, can't he? From fourth to ninth, that's going to ruin your day. Nine to go. Haslam still leads. Fabrizio and Haag are in pursuit and just waiting, I think, for their moment. Yeah, the Suzuki should have the horsepower, so it's going to be difficult for the guys to pass down the straight. And Leon's bike still tracking and handling very smoothly. Well, the Suzuki's been good here, as we've seen in the past. Kagiyama was on it last year here, I believe. Yeah, he was. Kagiyama got a podium here last year. Max Neukirchen got a podium last year. And the only guys to do winter testing here, the, here is that second group again. Of, of all the guys here racing this weekend, the only guys that came and did an extra test at Phillip Island was Suzuki. You've got to say that's paid off for them. It certainly has. So then, yeah, everybody else went to Portimao, did a bit at Valencia, maybe some of the teams anyway, and of course a test here last week at Phillip Island just before the start of the season. Look at the two different lines there by uh, Schmertz and Camia at the back of that group. Schmertz just goes wide and around the outside every lap into the Honda corner there. Well, I hope this is the way the season's going to go. You can see Guintoli's bike moving around just that little bit more than that. Haslam's bike is really having to push. Um, just see the sliding starting to come from the back. I tell you what, around. this leading group, though, seven seconds ahead of the chasing pack. Over Lukey Heights they come, and Carlos Checker looks up the inside, maybe. No, not quite. Everybody cleanly through, MG. Johnny Ray is uh, setting the pace of this second group, uh, and there'll be a few guys in the next couple of laps that are going to start making a move. Haslam completes another lap, crosses the line, takes a quick look at his board as he heads down to all the waves of the Bass Straits here in Phillip Island. Hargan's waiting to go. 
let's remember that Harger fell off in that corner we're looking at right now. More yep. than 230 kilometres an hour, less than an hour ago in the morning warm-up. Yep. So uh, good to see him. It, not only he didn't fall off of his own accord, Ruben Zaus virtually ran into the back of him. Uh, he laid on the track uh, motionless for a little while, but uh, got up and uh, went to the medical centre. They patched him back together and he's out there in the podium position. Well, before having a few words with uh, Ruben Zaz. Yeah, Ruben not taking part in this race. And there's your chasing pack. Can Jonathan Ray hold on to it? That's the question. Well, uh, Checker looks oh, quick, Checker. and he's lost a place to Guintoli. Yeah, but Checker, Checker dives into that Honda corner. He dives in on a really narrow angle. But, uh, Ooh, and that was uh, Leon Camia up the inside there, but misses out, went wide. Guintoli takes it back out of Siberia. Yeah, so you can see now the guys are starting to shuffle around in the back of that pack. Oh, look, uh, the mudguard on uh, Fabrizio's bike is coming loose. Will it make a big difference? Well, it, it, he might get Ooh, black yeah, flagged. He might get black flagged because, uh, I mean, it's... And it's got to be distracting, if nothing else. Well, he won't. He doesn't know that it's happened, but, it, I mean, it could get caught in his front wheel or something like that. You know, it'll break apart, but it, I mean, it is slightly dangerous. And they the have caught Haslam here as we come out of Swan, but who's going to be the Swan song, we ask ourselves, because Haslam is in trouble now. The two Ducatis, one slightly cropped, and the other in full flight at number 41 in third place. And goes the board. Away we go. Seven laps to go. You can see now those lap times starting to drop, 33.6. Uh, so they've dropped about a second, and this is where you would expect that smaller tyre to lose its uh, uh, performance advantage and start to spin. And the guys are going about a second a lap quicker now. This is where the Ducati should come into its own. But to me, Haslam seems to have opened the gap a little bit, especially through turn one and turn two anyway. I think he heard me. Not much of a gap, 0.18 back to Hager in third position over the line. And Haslam did a 33.6, as you say, last time, but pretty much the same pace as everybody else. Yeah, Here is the chasing group. Haslam is setting the pace. That is the thing at the moment, and he'll be oh, the one. Oh, going straight oh, on goes Camia. Camia. That is not a good move. Oh, well. So Camia ends another British hope. Well, it's a good showing by Leon. I'm really impressed. He's riding very well around here. Second fastest in the morning warm-up and was up there with the boys, but just made the mistake at the wrong moment. Over the top they go. The blind crest down the hill, diving down. It's a lot steeper than it looks on TV, having walked down it myself. But Haslam is climbing the mountain towards his first victory. There's Ron. There's Ollie. They can barely look. A quick wave. And all eyes on the Suzuki. Francis Batter's team got a bit of a batter ring last year. Let's look at the lap times. 33.6, 33.5, 33.4 for these guys last time. Let's have a look at this time. 33.0 for Haslam. He's pulled the pin. 33.3 for Fabrizio and 33.4. Yeah, he hasn't gained that much ground though, has no, he? No, he hasn't, but he has pulled the, the pin. He's 0.6 quicker than he was the lap before. So he knows that he needs to make a bit of an attack now try and see where he's at with these guys behind. Leon Haslam has led the whole race long, having taken the pole, his first pole last time out yesterday afternoon. And he's led the whole way. Can he hold off the two Ducatis? First time we've seen his bike lift the wheel out of sudden loop as well. So he's really getting hard on the gas, getting good uh, acceleration. Ducati's good on the brakes. Uh, Biaggi right up behind Ray there. Steve Hab different with a lighter uh, fuel load and with the tyres going off, does the bike feel to control now in this stage of the race? Well, it definitely affects the handling of the machine, that's for sure, and that's what the guys do. They'll start testing with a full tank and uh, they try and test the bike in the race conditions they're going to be in. So with used tyres, you want a low fuel tank. And one of the big modifications Suzuki have done this year compared to last year is they've changed the weight distri distribution and put the fuel tank of Leon's bike in the middle of the bike. So they've actually taken weight off the front end and put a li little bit more weight on the rear end. The reason they've done that is to try and get better rear weight distribution and better tyre wear and it seems to be working here today. Nervous moments for the Ducati team, that's Fabrizio's team watching on, his wife sits in his corner so to speak and uh, they all look rather nervous as we complete another lap with five to go now. Sun shining here but still cloudy weather here in Melbourne, Australia. Yep, the Ducati boys have responded to that. Uh, Leon 33.5 that time round, 33.4 and 33.3. So Ducati can keep up that pace. Ray, Guintoli and Schmertz now. That's the group, but hot. look at this. Biaggi now gets past Ray, and Biaggi's making a move. Ray is ready to it and almost comes alongside. 
Yeah, if there's a tough guy out there, it's Jonathan Ray. I won't expect that he'll sit there. He's going to make an attack back as soon as he can. He can't afford to get caught up in this uh, battle, or otherwise he's going to end up at the back of the pack and could end up as far back as eight. I saw an interview with Kevin McGee, of course, a two-time winner here for Yamaha back in the day, and he had an interview with Biaggi, and Biaggi quite... Uh, quite smilingly said, if they want it tough, I'll give it them tough. If they want it straight, I'll give it them straight. I can race any way you like, and Ray can give him what he likes. Biaggi will give it back. Well, Johnny, now's the time to get tough. <laughs> well, he knows that, all right. Here we go with the leaders then, and I think the red and white boys are about to get tough, flying in formation. Well, Will they stop the Suzuki, we ask ourselves? They've got to make a move now with four to go after this. If you think back to last year, Haga made his attack on the last lap, but uh, last year the Suzuki was moving around a lot more when Neukirchner was riding it. They've done a lot of work, they've done their homework, they changed a few different things, different, completely different setup of the bike, and uh, it seems to be working very well at the moment still. No problems for that front mudguard, though. No, I mean, it, as I said, it's not going to affect Fabrizio. He won't even know that it's hanging off. It's still on there, so uh, there won't be a problem. There is Troy Bayless wishing that he was out there, I guess. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's happy bicycle racing right now. He's actually going to be testing the bike in uh, a month or two's time, and that'll be an interesting feedback for the whole team. Uh, just a different perspective. Well, he's got a lot of experience on the bike as well. So, uh, and you know, Ducati have got to be starting to think about a new model. Maybe he'll get involved with developing that to be good to see. Here we go then. Can Leon Haslam create history and take his first ever victory in World Superbikes? He's going to do it in the most pressure cooker of situations if he can hold off the two factory Ducatis. He's Four. ridden Ducati himself back in 2004. Johnny Ray back in front now. He got tough. Look at Schmertz's line there. He's so wide into that Honda corner. Into turn one. And that is where Biaggi seems to be a little bit weak. Last year, the Ducati was, sorry, the, the Aprilia was very strong on the brakes. But into turn one here, uh, not as strong as he'd like it to be. Leon Hassan has ridden superbly so far. He's under immense pressure as he heads over the top and far away. Down he comes, hard on the anchors. He's as smooth as you like. He's and he hasn't put a foot wrong so far. No, he hasn't. He's as smooth as you like. But Fabrizio now is starting to put a little bit of pressure on him. Uh, I saw him getting very close into Honda Corner last time around. You can see the Ducati starting to move around now. Harga right on the back wheel as well. There's that mudguard flapping again. Another lap completed out of Swan Corner. Down the hill they come. Up through the gearbox. Over 300 k as they pass our commentary position. It's a beautiful sight here in Australia. Formation flying Suzuki and Ducati. Race one, round one. Just what we wanted to kick off the season. And the chasing pack of Ray Biaggi, Wintoli and Chaka continue. Just to give you an idea on the slipstream effect and how much speed difference that makes. Uh, 295 for Haslam down the straight that time. Harger in the slipstream, 300 kilometers an hour. It's amazing how he, whoa, look at Fabrizio. Ooh, just well losing, the there. That is traction control working as, at its best. Good job he's got it now. Exactly. <laughs> Fabrizio's rear tire now is really starting to move around. But He'd have been out to see quite literally without traction control then. Well, basically what it is, it allows it to spin up. And when it thinks it's getting out of control and going to spit you off, in theory, these things aren't foolproof. It cuts the power to the bike and brings it back into line, and it worked beautifully there for him. Ollie can barely watch. Leon Haslam's girlfriend, they spent the winter in the USA doing some training, going to Anaheim and seeing some motocross, and Leon is inspired. He's racing hard. Fabrizio, with his bike flapping in the wind, quite literally. Yeah. is trying everything now to stop him with three to go less yeah. than in fact i think fabrizio really wants the win here here is that second group of guys again schmertz at the back of the group now well johnny ray's done a great job of fighting hard with biaggi he's a battler his bike's not working as good as it could around here the honda they're struggling a little bit around here but uh let's remember that leon haslam put the honda on the podium here last year so that will be playing on the mind of johnny ray but johnny ray is really looking forward to getting back to uh, Europe with that. Honda. I'll tell you what, Haslam's doing a great job. He's 10 kilometers in the straight line, slower than uh, Haga. So he's making it up around the fast flying corners for sure. Yeah, that is the slipstream effect as well that you have to take into account because Haga's got the big hole behind the other two guys. But Fabrizio there really starting to look for a way far past now. Let's just see Fabrizio's bike's a lot smoother through there. Uses more of the oh, track. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice commentator's moment. Yeah. <laughs> Just as you say that, out of the seat he comes. Into Honda and out they go towards Siberia. Two to go, and Fabrizio is bucking and rearing. 
Yeah, you can see now the, the, the aggressiveness, and that's the third period. Oh, Fabrizio just a little bit wide there, just has a bit of a bubble. Well, short shift, fourth gear through here, over 200 kilometres an hour through here. It doesn't look like it, but that is a place you don't want to crash, and that is where Leon Haslam did crash yesterday. Haslam, as smooth as you like. Fabrizio hopping like a kangaroo down under. And Harga waiting to pick up the pieces if it all goes wrong. Short shift, two gears out of here into third. Use the torque of the engine around here. Oh, he can't watch. Oh. Norkin misses S, nor misses Fabrizio. It's getting tense. And there's another closer look at that bike, but it's okay. Yes, uh, it's not going to affect anything. Oh. Here we go. Haslam crosses the line, but here comes Fabrizio. He's making his move right now here. Oh, Haslam goes deep into there. He's got to try and hold it tight now. He can't afford to go wide. Fabrizio goes wide, looks up the inside, can't do it there. Turn two, Haslam still in control. They drop Targa. It's Fabrizio and Haslam unless they make a mistake. Haslam gets good drive. The bike's still not moving much out of there. Lifts the wheel off the ground through the fast hay shed corner. This is where Fabrizio's bike seems more out of shape. Hard on the brakes. Haslam's always been good on the brakes into Honda. He seems to have this part sorted. Who's going to win the first race? Out of Honda comes the young small figure of Leon Haslam. But he's going to be so much bigger in stature if he can hold on to the blue and white machine and hold off the red and white of Ducati. Hager settled for third place now. He's happy to get third. Not far to go now. Haslam, that's where he fell earlier in yep. practice, but not today, not in race trim. All he's got to do is, it, the thing is, he's absolutely laying it on the line. He's got enough of a lead now that he can do, he can win this race, but he just can't afford to make any mistakes. Fabrizio can't do anything from there. The last chance gasp for Fabrizio is through turn 11 here to get on the back wheel, which he's here done. Here comes Fabrizio, he's right there with him. If, what he's got to do now is he's got to get a good drive. Oh, he's, he's got, got a good inside. drive. He's no, almost on, side by on, side. No, he's got to get, it's, Haslam's cut him off. That's a good move by Haslam. Get Here a we good go drive. Then. Out of the last corner, Haslam holding on for dear life. They come across the line, Fabrizio, so close. Oh, oh has he got it? Fabrizio's won. No, I do not no, believe no, it. No. They cannot believe it at Suzuki, and it's cheers all around. Officially, the timing in front of me says Fabrizio wins by point zero zero four. I do not believe it. Do me a favour. Ducati have won again and grasp out of the clasp of Suzuki. It, it's a it's photo, a photo finish. finish. So well, it's a full length feature film as far as I'm concerned, because you could write a movie look, on that and look, start Tom Cruise in it. Fabrizio doesn't know, they don't know who won. That is how close it is. I just so feel for Leon Haslam. How close do you want to be to your first victory? Four thousandths of a second? Boys, Get away. Yeah, the boys up in the Perugia timing box will be very busy at the moment. Oh. Anyway, that was a great display. One of those guys, both of those guys think they've won at the moment. So um, one of those guys is going to be very, very upset in a minute. Well, all I can say is that you've seen a lot of sport in the last few months. But if you've never seen World Superbike, sit back for the next eight months and enjoy what we enjoy for the last 20 years. This is what racing is all about. Result confirmed by photo finish. Haslam wins. Haslam. I don't believe this. Haslam's the winner. Here we go. Hang on. It is, it is Haslam. Leon Absolutely Haslam Haslam. wins his first race. Oh, <laughs> Let's get a picture of the box because they will be going crazy. <laughs> wow, I've never seen it literally overturned within seconds yeah, like that. <laughs> now Look it's celebrations that. for Suzuki. Yeah. Well, who wants drama? You can have Shakespeare. This is it. This is the real thing. It, wow. It's only fair. That means Haslam's won his first World Superbike race. Congratulations to Leon. And yes, he celebrates. And you know what? Michel Fabrizio will not take anything away from... He won't be disappointed. Do you know how he knows? He's looking at the big screens. Yeah. His big screens here and he'll see that overturn. Haslam wins and Photo what finish. a great result. Oh, what an emotional roller coaster as well. But finally, the, the 91 of little Leon Haslam, the pocket rocket, has finally fired off. And Haslam takes victory in race one. The waves are coming in. Fabrizio is second. Hager, and what an important start for the Ducati team. That is, especially for Hager, as his quest to become world champion. Ray, Bianchi, Guintoli, and Checker. So Ray did hold them all off. 
Also in the points, Andrew Pitt, good to see that. Shane Byrne gets up there. Sykes, 13th, Neukirchner and Kamia after that spill, or at least when he went on at Honda. <laughs> well, can't wait for the press conference. And there... <laughs> He's only going to get better from here because let's remember the amount of starts he's had in his first win, that nervousness is now gone. If he can get through today with two wins, he's going to be strong for the whole year. And we know how well he rides at Portimao too. So uh, if he can get off to two good race meetings. And look, Mum Hat Anne in the background there is just too emotional. She's in tears and she's seen it all before and I do take my hat off to her because she goes through all of the gamut of emotions throughout each weekend. And there's Michelle. Well, what more can you do? Four thousandths of a second. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I guess he could have made his move a lap earlier. <laughs> yeah, easy for you to say. And there's his trainer, Rock, who's an Aussie, I believe. Yeah. Lives in Monaco. Great, great start to the year. And there's Ron Haslam congratulating his son to the left there. And thumbs up from the two. And they are inseparable, those two. They do a race school together, and they're out almost every day. And uh, Giacomo Guidotti gives him a hug. And look at the relief on the youngster's face. And he controlled that race right up until the last lap where Fabrizio made his move and uh, cracking racing. Harger, very, very smart. To consider what Harger's been through, third row start, knocked off at the warm-up, sore as you like, and still makes the podium. Harger doesn't need to win the race. He knows that uh, this is going to be a very long championship. And uh, after the crash that he had in the morning warm-up this morning, smart move by him. He knew that he would have had to use every single thing he had to try and beat those two guys today because those two guys were really, really hungry out front. So then, congratulations to the top three. What a finish. The official timing originally told us Fabrizio crossed the line. And then we had a photo finish. And it was obvious from that photo finish that only just, and literally by the front guard, <laughs> the dark dog, Suzuki, sponsored by the Estonian beer Viru. And I would have thought Estonia and the Viru boys will be uh, raising a glass or two. Yeah. Mr. Haslam. Yeah, I mean, uh, what a great way to bring a new sponsor into the sport. Jamie Dobb back in Derby. The Monster Man can also raise a glass to his fellow Derbyite because the Monster Boy has come good. Fabrizio has gotten off to a much better start than he had last year, at least. Second and nearly win uh, beats his fourth place in race one last year. So, um, you know, he can't be too unhappy with that. And he's got to be taking this serious. As we look, there's Max Biaggi walking back uh, to the pits. And I said this all along, you know, Bianchi may not be winning races every time, but fifth place, another good result at Phillip Island race one for him. It is when you consider where he qualified. Um, exactly, yeah. You know, he's come way up through the grid. And Guintoli, excellent job too. Yeah, Guintoli, sixth position, fantastic. Carlos Checker, a little bit disappointed. An interview with Italian TV straight in there, and I think there'll be a few people wanting his interview after this. Yeah, and as you can see, the camera's all around. Yeah, Carlos Checker, I was just, I expected a little bit more from him. Uh, finishing seventh there, he faded a little bit in the race. Um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully this is his first race with the Ducati. Let's uh, hope that he can get that together for race two. Yeah, and remember, of course, in World Superbikes, two races each day, so it's far from over yet. And uh, conditions changing a great deal yet, Steve? Well, they seem to be pretty stable, but uh, there's a couple of hours until race two. If this cloud blows off, I mean, as we know, here on Friday, it was 35 degrees uh, with a track temperature of 50. And um, if it gets to a point where, as we look at the points of the championship, 25 for Haslam for the win, 20 for Fabrizio, Haga 16. Importantly, Max Biaggi doesn't lose too many points, gains 11 points. Uh, Corsa with seven points. Cameo, five points. Could have been more than that. Neukirchner, four. Andrew Pitt gets the last point in 15th position. So good for the new right wagon team. Yeah, and in terms of the manufacturers, obviously, Suzuki up there and Ducati. Likewise, so we could see a good battle between them throughout the season. It's early days yet. We've got a long, long way to go. 13 rounds, two races each yeah, in re all. Regarding the temperature, sorry, um, if the guys have to change the rear tyre to the 200, which is the wider tyre for the next race, we could see a completely different race take shape. And you do that why? 
well, if the track temperature, the track temperature now is on the verge of needing to change from the smaller tyre to the wider tyre so you can finish the race. And when you put the it's wide... It's literally that. Yeah, it is. Like the tyre the, the, the they used in this race, this is an example, will work from 10 degrees track temperature up to 22 degrees tra track temperature. Then the wider tyre will work from 22 up to 40 degrees. Uh, and if it's around that time, it can be a little bit risky as to which one you get. And I don't think the guys are going to take too much risk. If it heats up over about 20, 25 degrees track temperature, we could see some different tyre choices this afternoon. Well, Paolo Flamini never shows me the script before the season starts, but every year he seems to write a pretty good one, and <laughs> he's done it again. Four yeah. thousandths of a second will the, ra the first race will be won by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. You just, you just cannot choreograph that sort of stuff. It's pure racing. Uh, at its finest, and it really is great to see. And it's going to be very interesting to see how Ducati approach it. There's Ron taking the family photos. So we'll send you the video, Ron, don't worry. <laughs> Congratulations. Great family moment for the Haslams, who absolutely live and breathe. If you ever want a racing experience, go and have a cup of tea in their motorhome. <laughs> It'll, it'll teach you what racing's really all about. Yeah, they're really a good family. Oh, they're great. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm not happy for anybody else but Anne Haslam, who has literally, since 8 o'clock this morning when I first saw her, been r just absolutely wrapped in emotion, not knowing whether to sit down, stand up. She couldn't keep still. There she is in the background, still tearful. And uh, what a wonderful moment for this Haslam family. He has been racing... Goodness knows how long, but he's certainly been on a bike since he was two or three. Yeah. And uh, he's been in MotoGP, been in World Superbikes, he's been in British Superbikes. His last win, in fact, was in British Superbikes, I think, for Honda. Giacomo Guidotti there, his crew chief. This yeah, is, good to uh, see him. A, a long time for him to stand up on the top step of the podium as well, so great start from these guys. Yep, it's been a while, and Guidotti's been a part of Bianchi's success and, of course, his success. His brother, in fact, running the Aprilia team this year. So, family presence. Let's pause for the British. Anthem. Following in the footsteps of the great Carl Fogarty, the four-time world champion, could Leon Haslam now follow the great man himself? Suzuki celebrating a hard-earned win with the Japanese national anthem. Great sportsmanship. <laughs> Not quite out of champagne. I think we'll have some more spraying of that now. The girls are getting out of the way. And in a moment we'll hear from the top three. Ollie's eyes are enough for the champagne, though. Ron has she can stop hardly, smiling. Yeah. Ron's got the permanent gr permagrin. And it's uh, quite an emotional year for Ollie, for sure. Well, what a race, race one. What a wait to kick off the season. Just what we wanted. Everybody anticipating a long winter. And once again, Australia threw up some of the best racing. Right from the get-go, Haslam got away well. And led early on. A good clean start from everybody, but Harger from the third row, superb. Almost guy diving into second place, but in the end, slotting into third. Haslam would lead from Michel Fabrizio. Ray would lead the chasing pack with Crutchlow in there as well. Good start from Corsa. But as it started to spread out, Ray stayed with the top three for a while, but he would drop down and bit by bit we'd start to lose some of the runners. First it was James Tozen going down over the top of Lukey Heights, a big high side at the highest part of the circuit. James carrying that injury anyway. Another man down, another MotoGP man, Chris Vermeulen, the local hero, goes down in a puff of dust and smoke. 
And Cal Crutchlow doesn't start his campaign the way he wanted to either. Both Yamahas out. And meanwhile, two packs forming with Checker Ray in the second pack, Guintoli and Biaggi. And then the top three, the two Ducatis and Leon Haslam. That's how it continued. The gap opened up to about six seconds to this chasing pack. And Ray would hold off Biaggi for as long as he possibly could. Camier was part of it until he went sideways and left at Honda. Uh, and down into the first corner again. Ray holding off Biaggi and Fabrizio out of shape with the bike flapping in the wind, quite literally, the bodywork. But bit by bit, he would reel in the Englishman and came so close to winning it. Leon Haslam crossing the line. And for a moment, we weren't sure whether Fabrizio had got it. He thought he had. It was a photo finish, but you can see it there by literally an inch. Haslam, the pocket rocket, is the winner. Let's go down to Kell Edge with the top three. Nori, uh, first race of the year, third position, third row of the grid, so podium must be quite good feeling. Well, uh, for result, uh, three third position, and uh, today uh, very good for me because uh, this morning I had a big crash, and uh, I had a big uh, swelling in uh, right arm, and uh, I taken a... Uh, injection for the painkiller and uh, during the race uh, many time I had to pump up for the arm but uh, uh, I following uh, front of two guys and uh, finally I did uh, third position so uh, consider for championship uh, I make good start for season. You had a good view of the battle up at front did you ever think they might uh, take well, each other out and you could profit? Well uh, I was uh, enjoy that uh, enjoy battle, battle with them but uh, you know uh, I have big problem for the pump up uh, light hand and uh, breaking sometime mistake a little bit but uh, I li I was really enjoy uh, with battling with them and uh, I looking for second race more better feeling Thank you Nori. Thank you Over to our second place man by one of the narrowest margins in superbike history Michel You've seen the uh, the video afterwards. It was very close. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, 12 millisecond. Now four is a uh, second race, but four thousand <laughs> of a second. <laughs> no, uh, this race is uh, for me fantastic. Uh, very battle in uh, Azram. Uh, maybe for a second race, is possible winner. When you crossed the line, did you actually think you had won the race? Ah yeah, uh, my ma Mariet, no girlfriend, no. Yeah. Come si dice, moglie. Why? Wife, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> uh, I look in the video. Uh, I winner, but uh, in uh, pit lane you post uh, position. No problem. Okay, better tell uh, next time. Thank you, Michelle. Leon, you led from start to finish, but you you left it close <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely a hard race, uh, especially with the wind out there, and uh, it's hard to really know who, what the pace was going to be and what it was going to drop to, and uh, it was plus zero from lap one to the 22nd lap, and uh, it was, I made a little mistake with two corners to go um, to run to the line, and I knew Fabrizio was right there, and uh, like I say, uh, I didn't know if I'd won until halfway around the lap, and uh, I was glad to see that the, the boys were celebrating in pit lane, and uh, you know, that wins definitely uh, for them and Suzuki. And, um, you know, they, they're the ones that got me on top of that podium. So uh, hopefully we can uh, do the same again in race two. Now, when you approached the last lap, did you actually think the win was possible or were you were really concerned about Michel and even possibly Norrie coming back up? Yeah, I felt pretty confident on the breaking and passing points. It was just a matter of the slipstream to the line. And uh, it, like I say, maybe if I hadn't have uh, made the mistake with two to go, um, we could have held them off a little bit easier. Um, but I was suffering a little bit out of the last turn and they kept just catching on me down the street. But, uh, you know, bike set up, everything felt good from uh, day one here. And, um, you know, we've got to take advantage of them opportunities. You know, it's a strong competition out there and I'm, you know, I'm really happy to get on that top step. And any wishes for anyone back at the office? Yeah, you know, all, all the guys back there, Francis and Patricia, you know, uh, we wish you was here. And, uh, you know, that one's for you. And uh, thanks for the great opportunity. Thanks a lot, Neil. Cheers. Thanks. As always, kind words. Haga happy with third and hopes to go better. Likewise, four thousandths of a second. Could Fabrizio do any more? Well, it was as close as you like, but ever the gentleman, Fabrizio, says complimente to 
his rival, Leon Haslam. And Haslam on the 91 Suzuki machine in his first race for the All-Star team, takes victory and sets his stall out for the year ahead. Well done to Leon Haslam. He'll be back for race two, and so are we.